Hello, are you all right? Yeah. It's good to be here in lovely Hammersmith. Nice young crowd. There's lots of old people going to come. There's a few silver hairs in the room, ruined it. <laughs> I've just come to not laugh, just to see shallow people laughing. <laughs> Ever since the credit crunch, older people have been going to comedy. The silver haired men have been dragging themselves along. It used to just be the 18 to 35 year olds enjoying a comedy night out. Come on, let's go laugh. We don't need punchlines. It's too postmodern. Heckling with a quail's egg, see how he likes that. Yeah? <laughs> The second most represented group, although not in this room, wonderful young people. Yeah, everything's so random tonight, anything could happen. The pressure when you're young is to make everything too... Uh, you hear this all the time, oh my god, how random, I bet something totally random happens in a minute on the night out. <laughs> that word in itself, evidence that nothing random is happening in your life, nothing. <laughs> Just a terrifying linear trajectory in front of you. Oh my god, how random, what's that doing there? I can't believe it. Oh my god, how random, I fell over. Oh my god, what happened? <laughs> yeah. How random, I can't believe Ollie's at the comedy, what are the chances? Well, you, you know, Ollie is your mate, you're into the same stuff, it's barely an interesting coincidence. <laughs> random is one of the, you know, it's one of the largest philosophical and mathematical concepts we can get our heads around. I don't want to hear it verbally ejaculated over a shabbly at the comedy. Oh my god, how random, Ollie's here. It's not random. What'd be random is if I dressed up as a knight and then stuck a squirrel in your shitter. That'd be <laughs> random. Yeah? Well, there's a squirrel in my arsehole, how random, that's true you. That's true you, <laughs> More and, and the sad fact is, the latest, uh, the latest research suggests that the more unhappy you are, the more likely you are to die early. This is why depressives get more cold. When you're tired, you get the flu. Guess what? Men statistically are more unhappy than women because our happiness correlates with testosterone. We're not psychologically happy. A woman's high is psychological. They measured people's saliva in winning sports teams. Women's highs and happiness are just as valid as men's, but they're psychologically based. Whereas men experience a chemical testosterone high, like in a dragon fight with a knight. And, uh, <laughs> And uh, so what, but what's the thing with testosterone, it, it degrades with time, like hair with teeth. So men are programmed physically to become more and more miserable as we get older. Whereas a woman's psychology enriches more friends, more hugs, more kisses. Look at my teeth, suckle the world. Right? <laughs> Whereas men, shit, 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 less friends, less hugs, less kisses, getting more and more depressed, less words. Even a, listen to a ma an older man's answer phone message. My dad only has one word as his answer phone message. That is it. He has a computer to do the emotional work of greeting. And he just comes in and does his name and then fucks off again. <laughs> he starts, I'm sorry, but Dave is not available. <laughs> yeah? How lazy do you have to be? Getting more and more miserable. Thinking ourselves to death, that's the latest statistics. So, that's, that, so you will die, men will die four to six years before the woman they're with. That's if you're the same age as the woman you're with, because men are statistically pervy as well. Normally five to ten years older than their girlfriends, yeah? I can't wait for you to graduate to normalise our relationship, yeah? yeah? Can I squeeze that through the gates, can I? <laughs> oh. By the way, it was too much only for this side of the room, this side of the room. Nice one, right? Knock one out and skid on it, that'll do us, yeah? <laughs> Skid on your own, dear, this one. Give us something about Iran. Quickly, quickly. <laughs> Ask me dinner, Jad's not going to satirise himself, you know. <laughs> That's an involuntary intellectual lip. Did you see that, then? That's an Edinburgh Festival intellectual lip. He's so postmodern. <laughs> but what has happened to younger masculinity? Look at the state of me. I'm an example of a warped and contorted... This is... I'm a heterosexual. I'm straight. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Some of the older people in the room are going, no way, he's definitely one of them. And I'm not. <laughs> yeah? I'm a gay dar malfunctioner. Look at this, this is a typical heterosexual male to have these mannerisms and this voice in this day and age is normal. I like Liza Minnelli and Vag. I love a bit of both, I can't explain why. <laughs> I love a show tune and a vulva. Sorry, I didn't mean to say vulva. <laughs> I don't like it because it's a medical word. And, uh, look at this is, imagine how confusing, that generation of dads above though, shaving it, that's my dad shaving it, racist, ultra working class council estate, BNP voting hard. And, <laughs> that's my dad's cockney head so violent he can ascend the stairs with it like that, yeah? <laughs> You better not be reading up there, boy. Right? They better be soldering irons and not GHD ceramics. Yeah? Right? And then I, uh, I got round with my dad. So some people think I'm exaggerating. I grew up a proper council estate right wing dad. And I moved in with my nan. I, we had such a bad row when I was 17, I moved in with my grandmother. You know, one of those really sweary, alcoholic, cockney sticks with hair on. About four stone, completely disabled in every way, except she could just about still walk like that, yeah? I can hate life, but I need biscuits, right? She'd just get herself <laughs> down to the shop. <laughs> Complete, I lived in a disability flat for three years of my life, so disability doesn't have this weird halo of can't discuss for me. For me, it's normal. I used a toilet seat that high for three years of my life. <laughs> and, a, and a bath lift. 
I was a bit of a stoner, so I just couldn't be asked to take the bath lift. So for three years, I used to sit suspended above a bath holding a green button. I don't think you realise how you take it for granted descending into a bath at the speed of your choosing. But at the same time, <laughs> if you are slightly stoned, it's actually brilliant. Just being above a bath with a green button going, take me to Atlantis. <laughs> <laughs> Really aggressive. But the thing she got, the thing she got right was, uh, like I've just been in Aus Australia. Are there any Australians in? Any Aussies? A country so relaxed, their leader's called Kevin, for fuck's sake. <laughs> My name's Kevin, I run the country. I've got a youth. In you go, mate. And uh, people call Kevin here working accounts with Colin and Nigel. That's where they belong. <laughs> My name's Kevin, getting accounts immediately. <laughs> and, uh, but they, they, the reason they don't have teenage uh, pregnancy and binge drinking problems, they discuss everything, like the Americans. Let's talk about everything, whereas we like to crush, suppress, get rid of, don't look at, thinking it'll go away. And then we've got the highest teenage pregnancy in Europe. My county, Essex, right? Yay! It's got the highest, highest teenage pregnancy is Harlow. Freaking Harlow in Essex, right? The people clap. When I was abroad in Australia, when we got the highest teenage pregnancy and all the English in the audience, when we won that one, nice one, yeah? How's <laughs> get pregnant the earliest? And we passed, can you believe we passed a law in this country? How backward is this, a supposedly developed democracy in Europe? We passed a country saying, it is forbidden to teach sex to primary school children. We must not. You know, if a nine-year-old girl is saying, please tell me about sex, she's old enough to learn the, the facts of life. Only in this country could we go, no, I cannot answer your question, nine-year-old girl. And then you're reduced to, to your mum's sex education, which is a book left on the table, and she runs off in the kitchen and hopes for the best. <laughs> oh, a book's appeared in your room for the library. Don't look at me. Don't discuss it. <laughs> Imagine that, a nine-year-old, I can't discuss sex education with you. Come back with the baby when you're 13. We'll backdate the information. And I... <laughs> That's my ex. It is, it is really moronic. There's nothing... I could get two... I could be illiterate, or I could have two doctorates. It doesn't matter with my... The Essex accent is horrible. There are people from Essex in the room. There's something confusing about the uh, Essex accent. At least the London accent's flat and open, sounds aggressive, probably stab you in a car park. Everything adds up, doesn't it, yeah? <laughs> I'm round, open, moron, punch you. Everything adds up sociolinguistically. It fits together. But the Essex accent, we've got all of the round, moronic vowels of London, but with a horrible, clipped, camp precision at the end of the word. <laughs> Imagine sounding like a fucking idiot, but really meaning it, right? That's what the accent <laughs> And all of the vowels, so the more vowels you've got, the more pikey your accent is. Do you want to go out for pasta, Kelly? Kelly, do you want to go out for pasta, Kelly? Don't do him behind a skip, Kelly. Don't do it, Kelly. Right. That's all of the vowels. Where did we get them from? We probably stole them from Wales in the Middle Ages. That's where we got them from. We need some more vowels. Quickly, over to Wales. Steal all their vowels. We'll see you in Wales. See you later, Wales. We've got all your vowels. They're just left going... <laughs> I sprained something. I sprained that. I sprained that quite badly. Yeah. And, uh, so I was in Australia. I was in Melbourne. It's all cultural. And we don't really watch TV. And we go to the theatre. And the first thing... I saw when I landed, I watched uh, uh, Britain's Got Talent, and there was a, a, dancing, a dancing dog on it. Uh, given that, you know, some serious stuff has gone down recently. Uh, the economy's pretty buggered, you know, we're living in a, a, a bad state with terrorism. There's a volcano spouting ash over Europe. And the first thing I hear when I switch on my TV is one of the judges watching a dancing dog. Like, no, all three of them crying, one of them standing up. One of them went, if there is any justice in this world, that dancing dog will be in the final of this competition. <laughs> They're quite large concepts to toss out over a dancing dog. <laughs> Justice and the freaking globe. <laughs> Do you reckon there's a woman in Nigeria buried up to a waist in earth, being stoned to death for adultery, going, I know I'm being stoned to death for a minor crime, but at least the dancing dog stands a chance of getting to the final. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Essex, lovely Essex. It's a paradox, Essex, isn't it? Pikey yet posh, pretentious yet moronic. This is my favourite Essex graffiti, right? They tried to open a, they tried to do a posh open day for a Montessori school. And there was a notice outside which said, join us for opening day. There'll be coffee, croissants and French toast. And someone had graffitied underneath it in chalk, underneath French toast, in brackets. Eggy bread. <laughs> How can you... <laughs> so, so Essex, I'm actually crippled from it. I can't move. It's got to my bones. That's fun in Australia, though. They're quite, uh, they come to the theatre in vest and shorts and stuff. <laughs> I was playing this posh Victorian theatre in Queensland, and they turned up in a vest, swimming trunks, and flip flops. I was trying to do the human, I could see one guy's areola as I was doing. <laughs> I was going to say punchlines, but I don't have any. And, uh, and I could see his nipple. 
And the whole place, and then I thought, hang on a second, wouldn't it be nice if we were just a bit more chilled? Like the Australians going to the theatre in our vests, shorts and pants. It'd be freaking brilliant. Imagine them at home. Have you seen my theatre vest anywhere? Have you seen it, Muriel? Have you seen my theatre tank top? It's next to your funeral shorts, Roger. It's right next to him, babe. <laughs> and uh, Kevin, that's the, uh, Kevin, the Prime Minister of, uh, of the whole of Australia is a bloke called Kevin. We've got freaking uh, Gordon and... Do you know the... Uh, do you know what happened when it, leading up to an election debate? Their, their opposition leader's called Tony Abbott, right? And they had a TV debate, Kevin Rudd and Tony, uh, Tony Abbott. And it went badly for the opposition guy. And the next day, this is how os different Australia is here. The next day, his PR people have got a picture of him in his swimming trunks on the front page of the newspaper. The opposition leader appeared just in pants and his approval rating went up. How Australia is that? I think you'll find whoever's got the biggest dick is the next leader of Australia. <laughs> Imagine that with Gordon Brown. Do you like my pattern cocktail? <laughs> or just Cameron with his Agamemnon helmet. Quickly chase me, Osborne. I'm just as Agamemnon again, quickly. <laughs> it's just like when we were at Eton. Not Eton, I'm one of you guys. I'm one of you, Mon. Give me some skin. And I... <laughs> I'm just Nick Clegg like that. I don't have a penis, just a Ken hump. And I... <laughs> anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of my time. I've been one of the Russells. Thank you very much. Goodbye.